Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and my Lethal Builder run. Uh, if you watched the last episode, you know why I've got a little bit of a grim tone to my voice. Uh, I managed to lose a character, and I lost her up here on the plateau. It was somewhere in this area. Um, and she also left her car. And it's a fancy car. It's the, the Mad Norma, and it's one that I kind of depend on for some of my uh, like Plague Heart runs and stuff. So I'm thinking what we're going to do today is a walk of shame. I think I need somebody to run up there, try to collect the loot off her body, and also bring the car back home. Um, and so the person that I've decided will do that is Guillermo. Now, Guillermo is my leader, and that's kind of risky to be bring, bringing Guillermo on, on uh, an adventure like this. But he's particularly well suited to it because uh if you look at his skills he's got marathon uh which means that he can run indefinitely as long as i keep his load light and so that's what i'm trying to do right now i'm trying to load him up with enough stuff that uh he'll be able to survive but not so much that uh that he go that we you know put him over the limit so I need to so the last gun I gave him was seven pounds and it was too much so I'm thinking of trying to find a, a, a lighter primary weapon might not have to be lighter by that much though I think I'm not sure if I'm not sure if bullets affect the weight most of these guns are like 12 pounds okay here's a five oh a sawed off 1887 you know what though like a sawed off shotgun is gonna draw so many like zombies when it comes to like making noise Oh, oh, light crossbow, though. Okay, yeah, so the Echo X2 sniper crossbow is 11 pounds. But the light crossbows, garbage as they are, are only a pound. How much does their ammo weigh? There it is. I don't have a lot of it, but not much. Okay, well, with that, so I actually had taken away the fire that I gave him as a last-ditch life-saving measure, but now I can give it back because he can afford it. So I can now run Guillermo around and have a look at his uh, look at his stamina meter. It's going nowhere. So he is the ideal candidate to go and collect our stuff. Oh, hey, uh, Frobotic. Uh, a new viewer just joined the chat. He says he wants to make a recommendation. Uh, feel free. I am always open to suggestions, though I, of course, can never never guarantee that I'll, uh, you know, follow them. All right, so we got a bunch of zombies down the hill here, which I'm just going to avoid the heck out of. We need to make a beeline for, I guess, this route up the plateau. And what we're trying to get is up there. I guess... Actually, I think I kind of know this route well enough. I probably don't need to have my waypoint on the screen. Let's let's see if I can make it without the waypoint on the screen. All right. So uh, he just hyperventilated a little, little bit. He's ready to go. And we're just going to start running. He's going to run into zombies. And he's just going to keep running. They're chasing him. No big deal. I, I I should make sure I don't look behind me that often, though, because uh, the last character that I lost, I lost because I ran into a bloater. So let's just keep our distance from all manner of freaks. So I'm just going to take the second right, head up the hill, and get up onto the plateau. And anytime I see a lot of zombies, I'm just going to give them a nice wide berth. So, how's everybody doing in the chat? I mean, this is going to be a long walk. We might as well get to know each other. <laughs> uh, this evening, by the way, I'm going to go see Dune 2, which I'm excited for. I just uh, rewatched the ending of Dune 1. I've actually been... Uh, I've been struggling to rewatch Dune 1 over the past several weeks. The problem is anytime I've got I'm not taking these zombies very seriously because I can outrun them all. Um anytime I've got sort of the time and emotional energy to watch a movie like Dune, 
um, I'm usually like, well, you know, there's a video game I haven't completed yet. I want to make progress on Alan Wake 2. I want to, you know, play more Pacific Drive. And I'll, I'll play the video game instead. And so getting myself to actually watch a movie on my own time uh, when it's not like a big event, like multiple people are going together to see a movie is actually kind of tough sometimes because I always just feel like I've got this massive video game backlog that I need to keep up with. And, uh, and any time that I have needs to be devoted to it. But I did manage, like, you know, like w basically with a long series of 10-minute sessions, I did manage to re-watch Dune and remind myself what happened. Because I read the book when I was a teenager, and I watched the, uh, you know, the 80s movie, and, uh, and then I, you know, and I absolutely loved the new one, uh, Denis Villeneuve's uh, new movie. I even watched the, um, uh, the TV miniseries from, like, the early 2000s. Uh, I think that's when it was. Uh, I watched that, too. Um, and for some reason, I, I still can't quite remember what happens. Like, like I remember most of what happens in Dune One. Of, of course, I just I just watched it. I don't have a, a hard time retaining the basic idea, but I just I forget where it all goes during the part of the story that'll be covered by the new movie. So it'll be uh, fun to remind myself. All right, we got a, a sleeping plague heart here. But it's not going to wake up because I'm not going to kill any zombies. So Radithcourt asks if I'm excited for Dune 3. I do hope that he gets to make Dune Messiah. I hope that we get to have all three of the movies that Villeneuve's got in mind. I'm just a huge fan of Villeneuve, and I really want to see what he does, you know. Just every now and then, when I know there's not a bloater in front of me, got to look back and see who else is there. Big thanks to Zoe McClatchy for making it so that dynamic obstacles like breakable fences can break line of sight with zombies. It used to be that that fence would not break line of sight, but this fence would, because the breakable ones were dynamic objects and they just had different rules for uh, you know what zombies could see through and what they couldn't. But there was a fairly recent update by fairly recent, I mean within the past three years, <laughs> that changed that. Okay, so now we've got a problem. Wait, is that her? Whoa, crap. Hey. So, I don't think so. That's an unusual looking zombie, though. But... The character that I, I mean, she had a bunch of equipment, right? Shouldn't she be searchable? Okay, so Ranith Cord said that uh, that that more than likely, her stuff was just automatically transferred to the base for some reason. So all I had to do was take her out, and I've apparently I've already got her stuff. Is that true though? Wait, no, wait. No, she she had a very specific crossbow. Hold on a second. Let's head down to our outpost and let's check. She had what was it called? What was it called Silent Night, was it? Or she had like a special Stay Frosty Pack. I think it was the Stay Frosty Pack. Um Crossbow. And that's one of the main reasons I was like, I want to find her body, was because. I wanted to make sure we got that. Oh, Midnight Solstice, that's what it's called. Silent Night's a different gun. Uh, I think Silent Night might be the revolver. Uh, but uh, yeah, Midnight Solstice. Okay, so yeah, I feel like I want to scroll this video back though, because like while I was getting this light crossbow for Guillermo, I could have sworn that there was no Midnight Solstice in there. So that means that that inventory would have been transferred very, very recently. Oh, so Ranith Court says that apparently there was a pop-up that said her stuff was trans was transferred to my base, but unfortunately, because we never put a log in to keep track of old uh, pop-ups, there's no way for me to know that that's what happened. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, I guess, I mean, I do record this. I could probably go back and find where it happened, but uh, most people don't, okay.
So I lost pretty to a bloater right around this area. This feels like justice. And this just feels like fun. <laughs> All right, anyway. Um, I guess I should have watched that happen. It would have made a better video. That's not what I intended to do. I wanted to grab this. Let's fix this car up. Okay. Car is back in working order. And the whole reason she came down here was to raid some food from these two establishments. So I guess I'll finish her job. I'm hearing some zombie noises. Not enough of them though. I still need to fast search to make sure they arrive. So Orthaus is asking me if I'm playing with uh, the Salt of the Earth, my sort of uh, lower difficulty community. And I am not. This is the lethal zone where I'm doing fast searching. Okay, zombies are coming in the back. Um, what? Whoa, what was that? So there was actually a pre oh crap crap oh yeah right I forgot he can get up on these Whew. anyway there was a previous video I made where um. Some zombie, it, its head just randomly exploded nearby while I was fighting. And somebody asked me, hey, did you have a sniper? Like like a, a, like a sniper um, a sniper cover radio command active or something while that was going on? And no, no, I, I don't remember ever activating something like that. So, so it's, it weirded me out, actually, when I, when I, when I, when I followed the, the time code. That they, oh, whoops, I hit the wrong button. I tried to do I tried to dodge that zombie like I was playing Alan Wake 2. I'm playing way too many different games at once. Hey everybody. Yeah. Oh what? Come on. Okay, now is Guillermo going to get in the same kind of trouble that Pretty got into? I vote for no. I'd like to not do that. So, Guillermo has a resourceful skill, which means he gets to recover more bo bolts than most people. I, think, I just want to get into this stupid restaurant. It's all I want. I wonder if I just go around the back here. Maybe there's fewer zombies this way. I also missed at least one container in here. Two containers in there. Oh, there's a whole horde over there, but... All right, how about I don't fast search this time? How does that happen? <laughs> Rathcore's reminding me not to forget the Mad Norma. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't jump up on the Mad Norma just because I, I didn't remember where it was and I was panicking. Um, but yeah, you're right. The Mad Norma would have been a good thing to jump on top of because a feral can't follow me up there, and it's covered in spikes. And there's certain directions from which a, a feral might actually be hurt by it. Okay, so if I can find myself. Not in like the, you know, psychological or metaphysical sense, but if I can find myself 
some food, specifically. Okay. I'm going to fast search because the zombies are already coming after me. Supposed to be one more container, right? Oh, there it is. Okay, they're gonna smash through. No, 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 no! Stop it! There, food rucksack. All right. Oh, all the zombies are coming now. Okay, okay. We're getting out of here. So now all I have to do is get home without hitting another bloater. So Ranithcord says that uh, when he said, oh, there's the bloater right there. That's the one that's trying to get me. Um, Ranithcord says that uh, when he said, don't forget the Mad Norma, he wasn't saying don't forget it like you can get on it if there's a feral. He's saying don't forget it like don't leave it behind. Luckily, I don't think that was likely because as fast as Guillermo is, I think I would notice if I started running home and didn't have a car. I think I would be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't there a car? Isn't there a car for me? And I would remember the bad Norma. Uh, so, uh, Orth House, no. Uh, I, tend to, I tend to play primarily on the Xbox. I think, I mean, I've got the game on PC, but... I just, I'm just really comfortable with the controller, and because an Xbox is easier for me to stream from, uh, because it's not competing for resources with OBS, I, I just, I always stream on the Xbox. Unless there's some really pressing reason not to. All right. Well, hey, we made it home. In like less than 17 minutes. We didn't end up bringing home as much stuff as I would have hoped. We got some stuff. And actually, I think we might have had some kind of active curveball that was making me more likely to find, like, more luxury items. So that might be why I found so many luxury uh, uh, items while I was out there. Hey there, Tank. Tank says that he hopes all of our evenings are going well. Uh, does it count? I'm, I'm, it's 4 o'clock for me. I don't know if it counts as evening for me yet, though uh, later this evening it is going to go well because I'm going to be watching Dune 2. All right, let's have a look at our base. So um, we just finished doing all the stuff that expand that improves our um, that improves our garden, its output. So now it's making six food a day. So now we are making plus one food a day. So not only did I bring home a food rucksack to increase our stockpile, but now we actually have a positive income. Now I'm going to have to keep feeding stuff into this garden to keep to keep my incomes high, but we're doing pretty well. Um, I don't think we can afford to upgrade. No, we need 2,000 influence to upgrade these guys. And we need 25 materials to upgrade this garden. Um, that doesn't sound too crazy, though. And this and this garden is actually being, its output is being multiplied. So if I wanted to actually have even more food coming in, uh, or, or like a more, a more reliable bunch of food coming in, what I should do is go get those materials. So the question is, where? So Salta Plumbing Supply is likely to have materials. This garage is likely to have materials. So I say, let's take the car back out and see what else we can find. So the tank says, shush, I want to see Dune 2. I'm super jealous. Yeah, it is very helpful. So like, I spend all of my um, mental you know, energy, keeping track of, like, video game releases and stuff, and I just, I cannot keep track of movies. Luckily, I have a sister who does keep track of movie releases, and so when there's a big, a big event like Dune coming out, she'll usually, she'll hit me up about it, she'll get the tickets, and I'll just Venmo her. Okay, I didn't get everybody. Oh, and I don't have a... There we go. 
Oh man, I'm just dragging. I'm dragging a guy around. I've got a feral just under my bumper. Oh no! Dang it! No, no. We're not doing this again. We are not doing this again. Get out of here. Where's my nearest outpost? I guess... Yeah, I don't want to go home. Let's go to an outpost. Luckily, this is my character who can run forever. So we're going to... Run to the outpost. Leave all the zombies behind. We're going to get some cure. Yeah, the tank says that, uh, you know, having a shared interest, like, you know, both wanting to go see, you know, big sci-fi movies when they come out uh, is, is, is a good way to stay connected. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, my, uh, my sister's actually 16 years younger than me, and, and so we actually didn't really know each other that well as kids because you know, she didn't exist when I was a kid. And when she was a kid, I was out in college and getting my, you know, getting my game career going and stuff. And I just wasn't ever back home in North Carolina. Um, and so we actually have gotten to know each other as adults. And uh, and it's, it, it's weird. Like, we actually kind of found that we had more in common with each other than we had with most of the rest of our family. Um, but uh, but we, did, we didn't know it for so many years, you know. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm getting some cure. Where, where's my infirmary? Here it is. Uh, there and there. Okay. There we go. Cured. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> what was I doing? I was going over there. <laughs> All I was trying to do was like get a funny video of the of my feral legs like dragging under the car and I nearly got myself killed because I wasn't watching where I was going oh what okay well I didn't think it was a zombie right across the fine I'm gonna keep running <laughs> yes okay I love Guillermo's life strategy just keep running keep running and nothing will catch you Okay. Well, at some point, you might have to set something on fire. But we'll see. Yes, for Kid is my co pilot. We'll be okay. Oh, come on. Okay. Well, I guess we won't be quiet coming in here. So, since we were already noisy, might as well be quick get through this before the zombies get in. There we go. Any more? Yeah, there's some stuff. Okay. My car still has a horde around it. Oh, come on, guys. Whoa! Oh. Okay, that was because of the car, right? Like, I just saw that zombie's head explode out of nowhere, but that was because of the car. I'm pretty sure, because the car's got the spikes on it, right? Okay, you know what? I just realized I've been loading up on supplies, so Guillermo can't use his magical running powers anymore because his inventory. Yeah, I'm in the yellow now with my encumbrance. Oh, there's... Three. Oh, what? There's a whole choir of screamers over there. Dang it! Okay, I only have the one, the one fire thing, which means I gotta catch as many zombies in it as I possibly can. It's 
sailed right past them all. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, that would have been perfect. I had it aimed all right and everything. But it just sailed right over their heads. Oh, that sucked. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Maybe I can just lose them. No! Get off me. Okay, the car is no longer surrounding. That's what I care about. Uh, now, do that move. Drop some crap in here. Okay, 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 okay. We did it, we did it, we did it. We're all right. What? Come here. Hey, why Why are my wheels not turning? Okay. <laughs> it's like, for some reason, my car, like, stalled out up there. I don't know what's going on there. zombies coming but maybe I can make him lose sight of me is this can be unlocked yes okay I think they don't know where I am so as long as I loot cautiously I might be able to come out of this with another rucksack there's two containers Can I tell where zombies are? No, I think I think if I had the scouting skill, I'd be able to tell where the zombies were. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Can I do this without any of these zombies seeing me? boys we are headed home so I'm not I think I got two rucksacks of materials I forgot how much materials is in each rucksack so let's get home and see if this is what we actually want oh nah. -uh. bad for getting back in my car. At least my character's got a light load. Oh no, I didn't mean to leave him. That. All right. Let's just, let's just go home for a sec. <laughs> we'll come back out and get the car in a minute. <laughs> All right, so Orithaus says that uh, a rucksack of materials whoops, will give you five in the Leaper Zone. So I think that means that that'll be just barely enough to upgrade the garden, but that makes me nervous, especially do we... We're spending four materials a day just keeping this place running. 
So I'm going to need at least, at least one more rucksack of materials if we're going to do this. What's over here? Aha! That place might have materials. And there's some kind of supply drop over here. Okay, well, there's stuff going on. All right, well, if they have lost track of me. I mean, I, okay, hold on. I should probably at least get a first aid kit or something, right? What kind of bullets am I making right now at my workshop? Okay, good. Let's get ourselves some more 45. Oh, wait, what? Who turned off all the water? Um... Okay. So we're going to fix ourselves up. We're going to grab ourselves some more bullets. And, I don't know, thermite grenades for emergencies? <laughs> or maybe whistling box mines? I don't know. Let's, br let's, let's bring some pipe bombs just for fun. Um, oh, what should I bring here? I should probably bring here. I've got so few meds left. But I think we learned our lesson last time. Oh, okay. Okay. So now our plan is to get back to the car, go up here, turn right. Come down here, get some materials here, see what's going on with the supply drop. As long as I get one more thing of materials, I'm good. Which way am I going? Yeah, I'm going that way. As long as I get one more thing of materials, I'm good. However, if I get two, that's better because that won't put me, you know, I'll, I'll have a little bit more a little bit more space before I'm going to run out due to like base maintenance. Wait, what was that? Oh, shut up. There he is. I see you. All right. Well, whatever. I was going to do this quietly. I guess we're doing it the other way. Oh, wait, this is a... I think I got turned around. I am not... I was not running towards my car just then. There's my car. Car currently not surrounded. However... No! No! What? I'm not moving to a new town. See if I can get things started fast enough. All right. Off we go. Let's not kill anything with this car because it's not going to last very long if I do. You can hear it's making a little. Oh, freaking. Floaters everywhere today. Welcome to the lethal zone, I guess. I've got no left door. What am I doing? I should fix this car. So, hey there, Acrowave. Thank you for joining my chat for the first time. It is nice to meet you. Okay, yeah, so my hope is that this warehouse down here, or whatever this place is, is going to okay let's just leave this up here it's got gonna not only have a bunch of materials itself but also some other oh shit no stop it oh of course i'm tired now all right well this better be a quick trip then all the zombies are, like, gathered around the Norma. Okay, fine. But maybe there aren't that many in here. So... Oh. <laughs> Ex 
excuse me, excuse me, ma'am, can I ask you for some directions? To hell? Oh, what the heck? There's so many. Stop. I'm so tired. Oh, what? Who's, why are you tackling me? What? I saw like I saw a fuel can on the ground. That fuel can right there, I thought it was a bloater. I was like, oh no. I'm about to back into a sleeping bloater. It's gonna be amazing. So Ranith Cord pointed out that appar that apparently that, that pop-up that, that occurs when you get near the exit of the map, apparently. So now it pauses the game if you're playing in single player. Apparently it used to not. I, for, I had forgotten what it did. Um, apparently it used to not pause you. And uh, and that would have been pretty bad if I just ended up with a big pop-up on my screen and the zombies are still chasing me and I couldn't do anything about it. Okay, that's what I'm here for, but let's see what else is here. Ah, that'll be good car needs that. I wasn't thinking about the fact that, of course, this is the airfield, which means I couldn't really bring the car in here. I think maybe the car would technically fit, but it's not an easy thing to get a car in here, if, if it's even possible. Oh, good. Zombies all wandered off. Well, not all, but, you know, a lot of the zombies wandered off. Let's pretend that hiding in the grass is a mechanic in this game when it is not. Okay, so we can repair the Mad Norma. Uh, Ranith Cord, no, I think, yeah, Ranith Cord is asking if the uh, the pop-up that occurs when you're finalizing a legacy. Oh, wait, what? I forgot. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just never, I never turned this stuff in. I'm an idiot. Okay, whatever. Anyway, uh, Ranith Cord is asking about the uh, the legacy finale pop-up, because there's a similar pop-up to the, to the moving one. Um, the moving maps one that happens when you're getting close to the final legacy mission. And no, that one does not pause the game. Uh, because I know that because it happened to me recently when I finished the last legacy that uh, that this crew had. Yeah, there is another warehouse down there. When I finished this crew's last legacy, that pop-up occurred while I was in the middle of a zombie fight. I had to very quickly accept it. But in the moment, you know, we always... Like, whenever you're doing a pop-up, you usually want to default it to no if, if it's something you genuinely think the player might not want to do. And so, so that pop-up defaults to no. And so I very frequently, I've done this before, I think, on the air, wanted to complete my legacy, but I was stressed out or distracted at the time that pop-up appeared. And so I said no just to make the pop-up go away. And then I was stuck having to restart that mission at some point in the future. And, of course, you have very little control over when missions start. So, um Boy, I'm hearing Horde. Okay, so I got my second rucksack. The main thing I wanted out of this whole... Oh, hi. Oh, that was weird. Did you hear that? So, okay. So we've got some, like, audio technology. So, that, like, if you're inside a house and a zombie's making a noise outside of a house, you hear a muffled version of that noise. Um, and I think it's something that's being done... I don't know for sure. Uh, Kevin would know. But, uh something i think it's being done at runtime to the sound i think it's the same sound file but i think it, there's something at runtime some kind of post process that's happening to that audio to make it sound like it's happening outside but for some reason that shattering glass sound that the zombie made as it came in was also muffled it's like the zombie still count it's like the sound of the glass breaking it's like it was somehow tied to the zombie and it's still considered the zombie to be outside or something like that and and so it muffled the glass sound and that kind of weirded me out because of course 
you know, that sound is because you're inside and things are outside. But that glass, that breaking glass was permeating the boundary between inside and outside. And uh, that felt a little bit strange. That's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, if you're first, you know, like if you're uh, several months out from ship, somebody could bug that and might actually fix it. But like when the game already works and it's already out, it, that's the kind of bug that is just so tiny. It just it usually just falls under somebody's radar and just would never happen. Because, I mean, you know, how much does it actually hurt the gameplay experience? Like barely, if at all. It was just a little bit weird for a second. Okay. Well, we are all full up because I'm an idiot who doesn't plan ahead. Um, so, and my character's tired. I think this is probably a good time to go home. Oh, of course, of course. I don't think that guy was there before. I think that guy cheated. Yep, there's a feral. You know what? Last time I thought it would be funny to hit ferals with this car. Um, I was wrong. It wasn't funny. So <laughs> not going to do it this time. Unless the feral is near my destination and I have to deal with it somehow anyway, then sure. But, I mean, near my destination, I've got an entire, you know, base full of people with guns. That will probably be my... What the? Okay. I guess we're going this way. Juggernaut. Let's just uh, forget that I passed through here. Is that cool? Can you just forget about that for a second? Oh, Orthos, yes, I did see that there was a, uh, a Dark Forces, a Star Wars Dark Forces remaster out. And I'm pretty excited about it, actually. I was considering even, like, doing an episode on it. I'm not sure that I want to, just because, I mean, it's a very old game. I don't know actually how fun it would be to, to, to watch me play it. But, uh, yeah, I did love that game. Like That, that, that game was, it was pretty revolutionary, uh, not, not only in being, like, a genuinely high quality, like, up to the standards of the time when it came to, you know, what you expected out of shooters. It was, it was actually, it was a licensed Star Wars game that was actually exceeding the typical shooter experience at the time, which is like rarely, like usually you imagine that licensed games, they'll follow on the heels of non-licensed games that are that are successful. Like, you know, like Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a really amazing, well-polished game, but you know, that, but like Jedi Survivor and Jedi, what was it called, Fallen Order, its, pre its predecessor, they're very built on sort of the, uh, the, 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 the Dark Souls model of, of how a game is built. And so like you've got, you know, people who are like serious about the Souls-like genre, you know, they, they will generally, you know, think of the, the, the actual FromSoft games as being like the really good ones. And Jedi Survivor is like, a, you know, a nice little thing on the side. It's a very good, very well-polished game, but it's thought of like being, you know, secondary. To, 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 the, to the actual, like, sort of cutting-edge, genre-defining games. Dark Forces was kind of a special case because up until that point, to my knowledge, I like, so, so 3D games had to do a lot of cheating in order to make the game, in order to make the maps um, sort of, and, and, the, uh, and sort of the, the navigation of the world easier to process on, like, those old-fashioned machines. The 3D had to be extremely fake. Um, and, like, you know, Doom, for instance. It was impossible in Doom um, to have a bridge over a tunnel. What the heck? Hold on. What is that juggernaut doing? He just pushed my... He just pushed my car off a cliff for no reason. It's like he chased me up this hill. I got distracted, like, talking about something else. I wasn't paying enough attention to him. And so, like, like a cat... He just knocked something off a shelf, and now he's just walking away like he didn't do anything. <laughs> Fine, screw you, Juggernaut. <laughs> I'm going back in my base, and I'm going to keep talking about Dark Forces. <laughs> a 
Anyway. But yeah, so, so you know, the, the you couldn't, in Doom, you couldn't have a bridge over a tunnel and go over the bridge and go under the tunnel. That just wasn't a thing. Like, uh, like all of the maps were actually 2D maps that just had elevation added to them. Um, and, and that made, I, I, I'm not exactly sure, you know, because I'm not a technical person. I don't know what technical savings that gave them exactly, but, I mean, you know, this was like... Um, uh, this was like early days in software. Like it was all about trying to make something that could run on anything, right? I mean, and people still, you know, have fun making Doom run on things because Doom was so good at running on anything, no matter how limited it was, because it cheated so much to make it seem like you were play playing a 3D game when you kind of weren't in a lot of ways. But Dark Forces followed pretty closely after Doom, but it actually had true 3D. You actually could have these very, some of the levels were actually very vertical and had multiple floors to them and everything. And, and for me as a player who had gotten used to the limitations of Doom, Dark Forces was this like really impressive technical, te like technological step forward. And it was a Star Wars game, which was just like kind of mind blowing. Like even at the time, you know, people were pretty aware that licensed games were unlikely to be the cool games, um, if you were if you were you know knowledgeable about the game industry. And so so yeah, so I, I don't even exactly know like what team built it. I wasn't aware of that kind of thing at, at the age I was. But like yeah, that, so that game really just blew me away because it it managed to be uh, to be such a such a technical envelope pusher despite being a licensed game. And I spent like the beginning of my career making licensed games, wishing I was making licensed games that were that important uh, instead of, you know, over the hedge PSP. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's that whole thing. Uh, but let's have a look at our base. So we can now upgrade our garden. So we shall. And with that upgrade, I will definitely be out of the woods when it comes to food. So even though pretty died <laughs> trying to complete this mission ultimately uh the mission was completed and in pretty's honor we have managed to get exactly where we wanted to go um i should see if there's anything else that we want to try to accomplish around the base before we wrap things up i think that might have been it you know actually it might not be bad for me to turn on this influence thing We'll pick it up next time because we are going to need to to wrap this up. So I'll pause and quit the game, get out of here. But uh, let me see uh, anything else in the chat. Mad Max Ra says we need a tow truck. Mad Max Ra is always asking for oversized vehicles that we can't possibly give him. So you know, I'll I'll, I'll let you I'll, I'll let you keep enjoying the the the, fa the fantastical version of State of Decay 2 that we will never be able to provide to you. I apologize for that, Mad Max Ra. Uh, or that says I'm gonna have to download Dark Forces and play it. I'm not actually sure how much to charge him for it, because I mean it's a remaster of such an old game. You'd think it would probably be fairly cheap, but you never quite know. People might, uh, uh, you never quite know how people make those calculations about cost. But um, let's see. So what else? What else have we got going on? So yeah, so I played a couple of games today. Played a little bit of Pal World. Played a little bit of State of Decay 2. Let me think about whether we should try to do anything else, how ambitious we should try to be. But for right now, let's wrap up this episode. There is my subscribe button. Here's links to other videos. Uh, of course, the next time we come and see these folks, that's going to go there. So you can click there, and I will see you later. <laughs>